almost right on time at 504, we have discussion of road foreman vacancy expected October 16th. Paul, do you have an announcement for us? I do have an announcement. Can, can you hear me okay now? No. Little marginal. But go ahead. Take off your video, baby. Uh, how about now? No, it's the same. Still the same. It's a little bit better. Well, let's see if I can't get much better internet than this. Well, still nothing. Yeah, we can we can hear you though. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so, guys, after. Uh, after 11 years with the town, I have decided um, to take a position at, a, at another establishment. Um, that, that will be effective the 16th of October. So that allows us hopefully to find some replacement if possible before then. Um, and then I discussed with Steve, I'm hoping to be able to uh, help make the transition as smooth as possible, even while I'm here and then thereafter as well. Thank you for Were we still able there, to Paul? hear any of that. Yeah. Yes, we did. We did. Um, so I guess the first appropriate thing to do is to thank you for your years of uh Anyone good service hear the anything? Town of Tulsa. Yeah. Sorry? Are you able to hear any of that? Yes, we heard yes, it all. Yeah. It's very slow. Okay. Um so what I was what I was saying is I guess the first uh, the first thing we should do with with all sincerity is wow is yeah. thank Paul for his for his years of service to the town of Middlesex and also thank him for the uh, for the orderly way he's uh, working with us on this transition. Obviously, it's going to be a challenge to find the right person to fill his uh, his shoes. We have already uh, with Sarah's help. Uh, widely advertised the position. I, I called uh, all the board members to tell them uh, we were going to do this. We didn't want to wait. Uh, even with with the 16th, that's only barely a month away. We didn't want to wait to uh, get the ad in the paper. And there's an ad running uh, for, I believe, Williamstown for essentially the same uh, the same position. So I don't know. Any any update? Have we any response yet from our ads? No. Zero? That's Zero. I never did see it in the Times Argus, by the way. Well, it is there. Is it finally there? Okay. Because I've been gone a couple of days, but I think I looked at Saturdays and it wasn't in Saturdays. Or at least I could. I, I haven't seen it either, and I get paper every day. Could well, we put it on front porch forum now that it's official? Yes, the answer is yes. Front porch forum, and there's also a, a municipal listserv, right, Sarah? Yes, the Clerks and Treasurers Association has a yep. listserv. I'm not sure there's an equivalent. I don't know if there's an equivalent in the road foreman world, in the highway world. Well, there is, there is Sarah. Um, we can get that information over to the folks at uh, our Regional Planning Commission for some help. Great. OK. Um, You know, we just we just have to see who we can uh, we can our we can snare at our net. It it appears at uh, at first blush, without going into details, that uh, none of our existing employees are interested in applying. Is that correct, Paul? That's correct. As of now, I've I've kind of prodded as heavily as as anyone cared to, and and it does not seem like there's any interest as of now. Okay. Um, the other 
other thing we we might have to consider, I suppose, and it's premature to do that at this point in time, is uh, can't hear you. You can't hear me. No. Can everybody else hear? Now me? I can. Yeah. Yeah. Now we can. Turn your volume up, Mary. <laughs> everybody you always can hear Peter. <laughs> I was I was just saying potentially appoint someone on an on an interim uh, interim basis, but you know we've got to we've just got to see. I mean, even if we can even if we can hire somebody, it's going to be unlikely that they'll be ready to start by uh, October sixteenth. But who knows? Um, the other thing I would encourage everybody to do, especially uh, Paul and Steve, who are well connected in this world, is Network, network, network. I've been, uh, everybody I talk to who was remotely associated with a contracting business, I've been trying to put a bug in their ear. I think what we have to emphasize is the advantages that the town has to offer. There are obvious disadvantages and, and Paul has been, uh, has been subject to all of them. The erratic schedule in the winter being the, uh, being the largest and most difficult one to deal with, but uh the, the regular paycheck the good benefits uh there's a lot to be a lot the town has to offer so someone who maybe doesn't have a working spouse and doesn't have a small ch children would be a good uh would be a good target but we just have to see we just have to see who we could find but the idea of of networking i think is uh is important you think of anything else steve or paul no. No, I don't think so, Peter. No, I I think all good points. It's certainly a, which I knew, which is why I wanted to give them at least a sufficient amount of time as I could. Um, the the fact that you know there there's there's a lot of help wanted, especially in this field, which which I knew would be, you know, would make it tough. You have to have um, a CDL license. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you do. No, this is this is a working foreman. So this isn't a, you know, this is a all encompassing position. You got to be ready to do the administrative work, the paperwork. You got to be ready to drive the plow truck. You got to be ready to, you know, supervise mechanical repairs. It's sort of all uh, all encompassing. Is there do do all towns? I'm just curious. Do all towns? road foremen take on as much responsibility as Paul has done? Like Paul's known to like write grants and things like that. Or do some roads have, you know, an administrative assistant that helps out with those kinds of sort of the, the minutia paperwork kind of thing? I think most what towns are similar. similar. My yeah. impression is that most, most towns similar are similar to us. Yeah, until you drop your head up into a, a either a bigger city or you know anything like that, there's there's typically not a lot of uh, middle level uh, management like that or, or upper level management in that regard. I did I did challenge uh, Paul to think about ways that the uh, the job could be improved from a personnel satisfaction point of view and also from a from a town performance point of view you know the big the the, the big bugaboo and the big problem is and and uh, and Paul experienced firsthand is you know he has small kids schools closed daycare crisis irregular schedule wife working at the hospital I mean just it's like the like the full court press on him this spring yeah so well, Paul, I appreciate the, all the work that you've done, and I have thoroughly enjoyed working with you as a select board member. And I wish you all the best in your new job, and I hope it brings you some sanity and easy living that you haven't experienced recently. We don't want him to live too easy. I appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, anyway, Paul, we, I'm, I'm sure that that is that is shared by. Uh, by everybody on the board, and uh, as I've, I've already stated it, so you know we want you to leave with your uh, with your head held high and uh, 
get on with your life, as they say. But we, need, we may need a little help from you in the meantime. <laughs> want you to stay in middle school. Yeah, absolutely. He's still going to, the good news is he's going to be a taxpayer and resident of Middlesex for a long time. So we still can reach out and touch him <laughs> some way, manner, shape, or form. Yeah. And Steve and I have spoke just, you know, I, I know there's going to be a probably a good, good time duration of, of transition. And of course, with, with everything that we've got going on in, in several different facets, I, I'd let Steve know we agreed that, that I would certainly, when I'm available, make myself, uh, you know, available to you guys for, for anything that, that we need administrative wise, there's, there's just going to be a lot of backstory stuff that, that will need to get uh, passed along uh, in that regard, especially with grant stuff and, you know, a lot of, a lot of different scenarios that, uh, that I'm, I'm always happy to help with when, when I'm available. I appreciate that. And we, you know, we need to think about a fair, uh, a fair compensation arrangement for your time doing that. I don't expect you to do that uh, gratis. That wouldn't be fair. So, you know, if it's an occasional phone call now and then, that's one thing. But if it's real time, that's a totally different thing. Sure. Anything else, uh, board members? I Maybe guess Paul. we're going to on by our next select board meeting, correct, Paul? Say that again, Mary. You'll be gone by our next select board meeting. Is that correct? No, I don't believe so. No. No, October sixteenth, oh. Mary. Oh, okay. So October maybe October sixteenth. Maybe we can force you to come one to one more meeting. <laughs> I, I'm happy to. I always attend. It's it's just trying to be in the right place to to be able to actively engage in the meeting is always the difficult part. Okay. Yeah. Well. This Thank darn you, Dean Paul, are, are you gonna are you gonna hang around for the uh, highway report, which is coming right up? I will be. I okay. will be. Yes. So, Steve, onward I'm, and upward. I'm here. Yeah, highway report. <laughs> okay. So we've we've been working up on McCullough Hill Road and and Upper Barnett Hill Road. Got the culvert done up there. We uh, did the Wood Road bridge deck repair which is a good thing done. Uh, starting tomorrow, uh, we'll be doing some hydro seeding up on Upper Barnett Hill Road, and we will also start uh, roughing in the new parking lot area at the town, uh, the uh, Notch Road pit. And that parking area is for the, for the uh, town forest. And next week, we'll be at the Notch Road pit Pretty much all week, we need to uh, finish cleaning up the pit, uh, get ready for uh, water runoff so that we're not polluting anything, do a little hydro seeding there. And also uh, the area that I asked Paul if we could put all that overburden in on his property needs to be seeded and mulched. Uh, I told Paul we would help him seed and mulch that. Uh, he is supplying the seed and the mulch. For that, but we're going to help them seed and mulch that, get that done so that's off our list. That needs to get closed up. Um, we are going to be doing a, I don't know if it'll end up being next week, but it's in that mix. We're going to be uh, uh, starting clearing up at the uh, wildlife management area parking lot on Notch Road. To extend that, they're paying for all the gravel and the trucking. We're going to do a little tree clearing, a little uh, grubbing, and uh, leveling that stuff out. Uh, also, as time permits, uh, Paul has got a bunch of road signs uh, that need to go up and speed limit signs. So we'll be working on that over the next uh, week or so, two weeks, whatever it takes. We're kind of getting into that as soon as we can. Um, let's see, we, I guess that, that'll pretty much take us over the next couple of weeks. Um, but then we will be going back up to McCullough Road. We still have some more ditching, uh, to do up there. Uh, so we will be back up there to try to get as much of that done as possible. I doubt if we will finish McCullough Hill Road this year. 
That's just, we've been having to come off that project uh, to do other stuff and take care of things. So that will be extended. Uh, I think that's about all I have, unless I've missed something, Paul. Yeah, I just wanted to update the board, Steve, on, um, I, I did place the call, a call last week to Ed Pierce. Oh, um, yeah regarding the the uh, solar speed limit signs he reached back to me on a friday I, I i wasn't able to reach back to him so i have another return call that i've made to him um i'm just i'm hopeful and, and in, in his message it did sound like we would be able to do a, an on-site meeting at both uh both spots um you know it's this is a first for us so i definitely want to make sure that everything is the way it needs to be sarah printed off all the paperwork that I need. So I have all that, but my biggest thing is just to, to be able to, to, you know, pass it through Ed through the whole way. That way there, I, I do want to make sure, make a point to have those in before I go. And my biggest thing is to make sure that it, everything leading up to that is, is the way it needs to be. So there's, there's no, uh, there's no mess left behind that has to be figured out with yep. being in the right of way and, and far out of our jurisdiction in that regard. Paul, have we identified the signs that we're going to purchase? We have not. I, I am. I have some calls into other towns. Um, actually, Montpelier is one of them. Uh, Berlin has some. So I've, I've reached out to folks to see. I've also got a call into WorkSafe where we get our, our normal traffic signs, uh, just to see what the options are uh, for, for pricing and size. My biggest thing with the state is I, I have to figure out from Ed. Uh, sizes and things like that, because when you when you go from different speed limits, uh, the the size of the signs change as well. So that's one thing that I need to nail down. So I don't even have pricing yet because I don't know what size they need to be. Okay. But are you saying you need signs for the solar array, or are you just talking about signs in general? I'm confused a little bit about that. Those are the um, those are the the speed limit signs, Mary. The solar radar signs that were voted on uh, during town meeting. Um, we're finally getting around to working on on getting those in. We, like I said, the, the town voted to approve the approve those signs and the installation of. It's just when you when you go from town to working within the state right away. And I think I, I don't know for a fact, but I'm not sure if we're going to be delving into private property on those and be needing easements i it's just it's there's a lot of footwork to be done this, on this it's on route 12 right on route 12 correct i just want to make sure that it's all done the way it needs to be to avoid any issues down the road i would so, i would strongly recommend if at all possible we have them in the state right away i think that's where they are going to be peter from one of those emails that i saw they are going to be in the state right away so that we don't have to have easements from private landowners. So we don't well, have to. Just, yeah. We don't have Better to get any, any kind of written documentation that we have the right to be in the state uh, right away. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, there's significant paperwork with it. Yeah. That, and again, that's, that's why I just want to make sure that. It, yeah. I just want to make sure it's all done correctly because I, I don't want to leave that a mess. and or have, have to do in redos or anything like that, so. Can I ask a question about, are you doing any part of McCullough uh, Road that's that's the part we moved up to class four or we moved it up to class three, I mean? Yep, we just, we literally had, had we've stopped right there because we've had to finish, now that we got the culvert from Barnett Hill, we had to pull off that quickly to be able to finish Barnett Hill, and then we want to close the pit down uh, before we continue ditching. But but we literally just just stepped into where the uh, where the new class or the old class four was, or where it was upgraded. Yes. But you don't think that you'll be able to get to that this year? Is that what you're saying? No, we will. We'll we will be back there. We'll be finishing. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. We will All finish right. It. Thanks. Thank you. Anything else, anyone on the highways? Okay, thanks guys. Okay, considering Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission grant to create a process for identifying town's capital spending needs and capital spending plan for prioritized needs. Action possible on resolution to pursue grant funds. 
Liz. So, um, Susan Clark, after our conversation at our last meeting, um, Susan and I said we would pursue looking into um, applying for a grant to help us uh, support this process of um, potentially building a capital spending plan for the town. Um, and so what we did was, um, I reached out to Sandy Levine and um, she quickly informed me that the deadline is October 1st for this grant. Um, and um, and they're supportive of, of the um, idea that we have behind applying for this grant. Um, and so what Susan and I did was we had a conversation with Claire Rock from the Regional Planning Commission and uh, talked with her about sort of the ideas we had and were they worth pursuing um, for for a grant for a planning grant and she thought they were based on um, what uh, sort of the the goals of the grant are this this coming fiscal year um, so the the grant is due October 1st and in order for us to um, apply for it we also have to include with it this resolution that basically states that the select board is supportive of the select board applying for this grant because it really is the select board applying for the grant um, and Claire made it sound like the planning commission I, I'm, uh, yeah, the, um, the the planning commission didn't need to sign it, but when I read through this, it looks like they do. Um, and, I'm sorry. watching. Oh, you are okay. I'll let, I, I meant to sign. Eric, put yourself on mute. I'm sorry about that. It's okay. Um, so, um, so at any rate, um, it, it does uh, say that we have to do a 10% cash match. Um, and, and so what I wanted to sh share with you tonight is just sort of a brief um, overview of, of what Susan and I and Claire had talked about in terms of what this process would look like. Um, so we were what we'd really like to do is engage, based on what the conversations that we had at town meeting, uh, we want to make sure that our community is engaged in some manner of this process. Um, and so this grant would be applying for not just support in building the plan, but in also um, facilitating a series of community meetings where we could invite the community to um, to hear at, about, you know, our upcoming um, expenses over the next basically one to 10 years you know this is these these plans can go um as long as 10 years and many of them do where they sort of have a one-year plan then they have um a 10-year plan and each year you revisit it to see where you're at um based on how you know based on last year's plan um and and these if you got a chance to kind of peruse that 36 page thing i sent you um in that particular town, you know, they, they had a bit like they included so much stuff in their capital plan. Anything that was basically over two thousand dollars was included in their plan. Um, and um, and it included roads as as, you know, capital and as a as a capital that um, that you would invest in. Um, it included things like your buildings and um, your equipment. Um, and so, you know, ours doesn't have to look like that, but that's a model of what it would look like if a town, if, if we adopted and created a plan that allowed us to envision our long-term spending needs. Um, it also sort of allows then for a process for people in the town, like other groups, for example, who may want to be included in a capital spending plan. Like for example, the village has just done a big um, plan for the, for the village. And there are many line items in that plan that cost thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars, like sidewalks and um, you know, bike paths and things like that. So those are sort of items that, that could be sort of presented in a capital um, spending plan. Um, so, so really what, um, 
by applying for this grant, we'd be asking for money to help us facilitate meetings and then also work with the Regional Planning Commission to build this plan. Um, so how much money we'd be applying for, I don't know yet, but the maximum you can apply for is 22,000. So at 10%, that would be 2,200. I don't anticipate that kind of money at all. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sort of thinking along the lines of not having something as grandiose as that thing I sent out, but that more of the money is spent on the meeting facilitation and hiring someone from outside the town to guide um, the, the conversations um that that we would have so that we're more transparent with with our spending and offering this as a you know opportunity for for townspeople to hear about what we're you know what we have in the works and and weigh in on it um and and have some i mean we know that we need a grader for example it's not like you can't there it's not like there's some things there's no, there's no choices in the matter right but they still get put into your 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 capital spending plan but then there's other things that that aren't necessarily, um, you know, uh, mandatory, like sidewalks for Middlesex Village, um, or a new town clerk versus a new town clerk building, rather, versus, um, a, you know, a, 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 an improved uh, building. So those are, this is just an opportunity to, to um, put everything out on the table, look at it in, in, a, in a bigger picture, and um, get some guidance. So, so I, I guess I'm asking you all to support this resolution that would allow us to pursue applying for this grant. That's due. Did, did you prepare a resolution, or do you? It's a, it's just... it's a like it's a canned one that they give you to fill out. I sent it to Sarah, um, and it basically just fills in names and signatures that it's supported. Are you? It's a green. You're word. getting a little bit less loud. Um, Liz, we can't hear you. Yeah, we can't hear you. I'm shouting. <laughs> Move closer or turn up your. Um, I thought it was me, so I plugged myself in. Well, but sometimes it's uh, that I have to get in and out. Um, no, that's me turning. Did you hear enough to understand it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It only got uh, not so loud about three minutes ago. Yeah, it's probably my Zoom connection. I don't think there's anything I can do with my computer. Well, we heard you. So do you have any idea the size of the grant that you would apply for? Um, so just thinking about like the what's next Middlesex, that whole event costs like $5,000, I think. Um, to that we got, maybe it was a little bit more. Um, we got that from the community um, foundation, um, that grant, um, and that hired the facilitator. I think we can hire Central Vermont. I think Claire, this woman Claire, is actually um, well versed and has done this with other towns. So we could hire someone directly from the Regional Planning Commission to help us facilitate the meetings. Um, Why do we have to hire her if she works for them? Doesn't I she think, work? I don't think we can, can get them for free. I, I think that when we talked to her, it made it sound like that we would hire her, but maybe they do it at a cheaper cost. Um, so um, I haven't actually looked. Um, we, she, she sent me a bunch of stuff. I don't think that anything included like how much people you're are louder. <laughs> Am I too loud now? No. no you're no. Fine. <laughs> okay. Um, but you know, I'm guessing anywhere between maybe five and ten thousand dollars. Yep. Yeah. I guess my. I. I, I mean, I. Th I think we need to do this. We've discussed it. Yeah. Yeah. We've discussed it at town well, meeting. Whatever. I. I absolutely think we should go ahead. My. Right. My only other concern in this is, and I only spent about twenty minutes glancing through that uh, sample that you sent us, Liz. But yeah. there's an awful lot of work in there for our for our town staff as well. I mean, you know, it's great to get input from the community, but you know, the the highway folks have got to do a lot of work. The you know the town clerk's office yeah. has got to do a lot of work. I mean, there's a lot there's a lot to do from a town employee point of view, and there's going to be a cost to that as well, of course. Yeah, and this this process, just so you know, is about a, it could be a 12 to 18 month process. So this isn't something that happens overnight. Yeah. Uh, and and it um, 
you know, I, I sort of see it akin to what the road crew already does, right? Like they have a five-year plan of their roads, but we don't really have like a five-year plan of, of our um, buildings or our, um, you know, other infrastructure or, or the vision that we have for the town. And so I think that this is sort of a, um, and the other thing too, is that none of this is set in stone. This is like a plan, right? It's not, um, it, it doesn't mean that we have to then go to our budget and say, well, this is what our plan does, but this allows us to incorporate in our plan as our budget committee is meeting to present options based on like what our plan includes. Um, so the plan can change all, like every year you might be adjusting the plan. Now, what is different about, and I asked Claire about this because this is different from how we traditionally um, purchase things. We traditionally purchase things by borrowing money and saying, okay, it's time for a new truck. We're going to get our, you know, five-year note on the truck. And, and in this, in, in many of these capital spending plans, as they're sort of referred to, um, many towns put money aside each month, I mean, each year in their budget to, to put toward that larger expense that they anticipate down the road. Yeah. So, you know, if let our plan is just, to, go I ahead. I just interrupt you for one second. So, yeah. you know, all, all this is, all this is going to come out in the, in the wash as we go along, the, the one comment I would make is, in the old days, that's exactly what we did. We had an equipment fund. We put money in the equipment fund every year when we bought a truck or whatever it was, front end loader, grader, whatever. We took it out of the equipment fund or took money out of the equipment right. fund, borrowed the balance or, or whatever. Our philosophy for, I don't know, the la I forget when we did away with the equipment fund, but a long time ago, anyway was, you know, pre-funding sounds like a good idea, but what you have to keep in mind is you're charging the current taxpayers for something that may, they may never see the benefit of. And when interest rates are low, which they have been for quite a while, especially for municipalities, by borrowing, the taxpayers who are paying for this equipment are the taxpayers who are seeing that equipment run up and down the roads. And, well, you know, it's a, it's a philosophical difference we need to think about as we go through this process. Well, we're, we're gonna decide Bill, that tonight. I think Bill Yacovoni didn't like us having those funds sitting around either, did he, as a matter of principle? No, he doesn't mind. They don't mind you having, you know, we have a paving fund, we have a bridge fund, we could have an equipment fund, that's no problem. What he didn't like was the undesignated fund balance. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, we could we could go back to doing it that way. All I'm all I'm pointing out is is it's a it's a philosophical a philosophical question, and especially if it's really money, really big money, which it's going to have to be, um, you know, to charge people now for a truck that they're going to see in five years or six years or who knows when. Uh, right. I just don't know if that's what we want to be doing. But that that's a decision we have to make as a town. I'm not. Right. I'm not suggesting one way or the other, but there's a reason we have made it our approach to do the borrowing route. So I would recommend um, that we uh, approve this resolution and see if we can go ahead and get this grant. And if we can, then we're off to the races. I'll move approval of it. Is there a second? I'll second. second. Okay, yep. all in favor of the resolution Wait, hold on. Could you also authorize Peter to sign it if you can come? Yes, stop. yes I meant whoa, 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 stop. Stop, stop, stop. Bad idea to have me sign it because I'm away. Okay, well, I, can, I can sign a scan and scan it back, but I can't sign it. I can sign it. I'm around. Okay, well, just pick somebody to sign it. Well, I would, if Mary's around, I would have Mary sign us. Okay. Vice Who's Chair. I draft the, uh, the uh, grant. You, Liz, and, and Susan, or? Yeah, it's a huge grant. It's like a 36 page. Think about 36 pages that you saw. The grant itself is 36 pages. I mean, it's a lot of work. And um, 
you know, the regional planning commission is going to help us out with some of it, but, um, you know, oh, this is, a, well, before we, before we move this, this is something that I want to bring up and I don't know if I should just have an offline conversation maybe with Peter, but, um, the grant in order to be competitive, um, there's a couple of things in it that are, um, that like are addressing COVID for example. Um, so, you know, has your town been negatively affected by COVID? And, um, and I, I mean, and I think that, you know, planning a, you know, our argument is there in terms of, you know, we want to be transparent and have the townspeople understand what our upcoming expenses are and involve the town in this process um, because, you know, everyone is pinching their pennies and everyone wants to know how much things are going to cost, right? And so one of the things that I'd like to do is create a short um, survey to send out on Front Porch Forum in like the next week, um, which basically will give us a little bit of data um, to use in the grant sort of situational data. So like one of the questions I want to ask is, um, you know, have have you been unable to pay your monthly bills because of COVID, right? Um, we can all say we've been affected financially because of COVID, because, you know, the stock market, right? We're all worried about, you know, so I need to word it in a way that makes it, um, gives us some data that people are potentially impacted financially by COVID in a detrimental way. Um, so, Peter, is that something that, like, because it has to go out fast, I don't think it necessarily needs to be approved by the select board, no. but I would like someone to see it, and, and Susan and I will work on it together, we're getting together on Thursday, um, I'd like people to see it so that we, um, so that you understand why we're asking these questions, because it really is so that we have a better informed data to present. What I would, right what right. I would suggest, and I know it needs to be quick, but when you have a draft ready, Circulate it. Send it around. Send it around to the board and give us, you know, twenty-four hours or something okay. to respond. And we'll that's respond. fine. If it doesn't um, do anything with uh, the open meeting law. Then I can do that. Is that is that right, Sarah? Um. Well, I think what you're trying to do is get input on something that you're talking about tonight. I'm just walking through this. So if you don't have a group discussion where you're all talking about it at once you do it yeah. with individual emails to each person it's probably okay. yeah. all right so i'll send individual emails to each person so it's only about whether people were affected financially because certainly in terms of doing communication about and being transparent it's a lot harder doing everything by zoom than but in person but i'm assuming that you'll raise that issue about yeah so like another question is would you participate in a, a series of conversations either by zoom or in on phone or in person um like in plainfield for example they did a socially distanced meeting in the rec field right so so and they had like you know some white some you know, sandwich boards where people could make comments and things like that. So there's there's an opportunity, not right now, like because it's going to be winter, but like maybe in the spring where you could have something that's in person. Um, but but yeah, I mean that's so. This is another question. Like, would you even be interested in doing this? Do you? Um, uh, so so anyway, so we're we're throwing together some questions that um, that I'd like you guys to review so that you understand why we're asking these questions. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Well, we need to vote on the resolution. It's been Wait, I'm, I'm, I'm lost. So is it Peter? Uh, who made the motion? Mary Skinner. Mary, who Mary. seconded it? Steve. Phil. Steve beat, Steve beat me. Oh. <laughs> okay. Mary, and Mary's going to sign, Sarah. Okay. Okay, we're ready to vote. All in favor of the resolution, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? You've got it, Liz. All right, thanks. So, Sarah, I'm not sure if it then has to go to Sandy to sign. You know, we'll just work it out. We'll okay. just print it out, fill it out. Mary can sign it. We'll just have Sandy sign it. Also, it's, it's going to go to the Central Vermont Planning Commission, CVR PC, right? Yes, it goes with the application, I believe. With the application. Okay, because yeah, I'm I just so. going to call Claire and say, what do we have to do? Yeah, um, 
I think it has, there's something about September 30th. They have to have something before the October 1st deadline, but I'll, I'll look into it. I'm going to be reading more about it on Thursday. Okay. It probably wouldn't hurt to just send it in now or okay. as soon as possible. All right. Um, thank you, Liz. Yeah, thanks and everybody. And for all the work and, and Sarah, for all the work you've been uh, doing on this. So, we'll see. so Liz, if there's any, any part of that that I can work on to help you out, I'm happy to spend some time working on it also. Yeah, that, I mean, I, I may definitely call on you guys. I mean, there, there may be things that I can't answer. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be things I can't answer that are going to be related to the town. Um, I will need a copy of the latest town plan, um, which should be on our website, right, Sarah? Yep. It's on our website. Because we have to sort of tie, tie in what's in our plan to this grant as well. And Sandy did send me the town um, village uh, draft that, that she just got from Du Bois or whoever it was that was doing it. So, Du Bois. Du Bois, yeah. Okay. Okay, well, stand Thank by you. everyone because I suspect there are going to be opportunities for a number of people to work on this a little bit. If we could divide it up a little bit and make yes. it easier. It would be, be great. Good. That would be good. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Dorinda. Treasurer are... report. <laughs> yeah. So I sent out a budget status report. Um, and uh, which brings me to my first topic. I think the first week meeting in November, we probably should start the budget process. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, so uh, I don't know. I, I'll talk to Sarah about, you know, um, wait, I'm going to so stop. I don't stop. know how, I don't know how we'll address it this year. Like as far as um, the boards, they're going to have to do the presentation on zoom or something like that. Yep. The committee. Yep. So yeah. I'm just, okay. I just want to interject here that the first Tuesday of November is election day. Right. Yeah. So we need to move that meeting. Yeah. Period. End of question. <laughs> <laughs> there was no question, Sarah. Well, <laughs> no, it's not like we could just squeeze it in and that this is going to be. No, 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 no. This is enough no. for discussion. <laughs> <laughs> But that's not like a question. That's a statement, Steve. <laughs> and so, and so, I don't think we should start the budget meeting until after the elections. Okay, good. No, I agree. Yeah. But I would, I would leave. I mean, we need to figure out when that meeting is going to be. But I would, uh, I would leave it up to you and Sarah to parse out who's coming when and all that. I'm sure we'll get pushback from the fire department whenever we ask them to come. But <laughs> and, and of course want the data for the whole year <laughs> anyway yeah anyway, it it's, is it's, what it is it's time to talk about it i guess the question is i would presume that we should not try and have a meeting that whole week of the election it's going to be an ongoing process and it's going to be a circus in the town please, clerk's yeah, office so please, I would, don't, please don't I'll, I'll i'll go insane if we no. could just move it to next tuesday that would be very helpful or monday or something so November, uh, so what is the date, the second Tuesday, the date of that? The 10th. Probably the 10th. And that's the day that doesn't work for you, right, Phil? Right. Oh, the second week, yeah. yeah. Right, that's why we moved to the first and third. What time is your meeting? Six. Can't so get could, we meet at, could we meet at four on that day? Sure. I know that's probably problematic for you, Liz. Hello, Liz. Liz, you're she muted, worked. Liz. She's muted. Could you repeat that question? Well, the, the question is, <laughs> you weren't asleep, were you? I see that. I see that sleepy smile. Yeah. Um, she was checking Facebook. Is everybody working on the grant? <laughs> Any grant. Okay. The, the question is, we don't want to have our select board meeting in November, the week of the election. No. So the question is, if we push it off for a week. That conflicts with Phil's uh, computer meeting. Yep. Could we possibly it, meet at four o'clock? Could that possibly work for oh, you? Sure. It depends on the day. What day are we talking? November what? Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. But Tuesday, November what? 10th. 10th. 
Okay, sorry, I didn't hear. Um, that's perfect. I have nothing on the calendar. Good. Okay, so select Great. one. And then we're going to start at four. Well, then we could start at the regular time at five then, right? Why? Because it's what? Phil. I don't know. I mean, because we, oh, because of Phil. Okay, gotcha. Right. No, no, no. We're going to have the meeting. We're going to have the meeting from four to approximately six. So Phil will have a long, tiring evening, but he'll be able to attend both yeah. meetings. So That'd we're just deleting the occurrence on the third and we're having yep. it on the fourth. And then are we going to have it again on the 17th? No, no, no. We're having it on the 10th. 10th, Liz. I know. I meant that. It really was asleep. And then are we having it again on the 17th? No, she's saying our second meeting is on the 17th. Well, we're going to, you know, we either meet on the 17th or we meet the following week and then we then we run into Thanksgiving. No, leave. Leave it on the 17th. So do the 10th. Yeah, so we do two weeks in a row. Yeah. Yeah. That won't that won't kill us. Okay. Maybe it won't kill us. Okay, thank you. Okay, Dorinda. Um, other thing, just so you know that we're in the middle of our auditing of our books for year end. So um we're just getting information off to them now. So um, but that's ongoing. And we're still holding on to the Du Bois and King um, check. I still have not received any information on when we're going to receive this money for the grant. Oh. Hmm. Now that's. You're holding on to the. Can you remind me? I, I remember this vaguely, but I don't remember it that well. You're holding well, on to their invoice. We wrote the check and you told me not to mail the check because we right. hadn't received okay. the grant money. I still don't have not received the grant money and now we've had the check for about a month. What grant money is it again? The one for the village plan that Du Bois and King just did the study on. So is this the planning commission that's holding it up? No, I don't know. Yeah, well, they're the ones that applied for the grant. Yeah, but weren't we? I'm I'm sorry, Dorinda. I can't remember either. But I mean, yeah. isn't it isn't that that the planning commission has to draw down the funds for the town, and they haven't done it? So it is. Well, it is, I I brought it up at the last meeting, and you guys were going to talk to um, Mitch. I talked yeah. to Mitch. I had reached out to both Mitch and Sandy. I never heard back from Sandy. Mitch called me and said that he had reached out to him, but we still have not heard anything more. Reached out to who? Mitch had reached out to who? He, to the people for the grant, I guess. No. Isn't this the one yet? where um, Peter, I think you and I were named to be able to go into the portal? Correct, I think so. Sign off. Mitch had contacted me. I was out of town. And so I know I think you were around and I said, you know, contact Peter. He's around. Never now, did. There's the holdup. Well, <laughs> God damn it. why is it that Mitch seems to be in the middle of all our problems lately? That's a subject for later tonight, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. If in fact, if in fact, Phil or I need to need to sign something, we need to find out what it is and get our hands on it. I will, I will reach out to Sandy tomorrow morning. I mean, she's got to, she's got to take charge of this and take control of it. The the question is, Dorinda, at some point we probably void that check. I don't know in terms of best practices. Can we hold a check for forty five days or not? I think so. Okay. Ninety right. days. Probably don't want to, but. So as, as far as we know, just to be clear, Sandy or someone from the Planning Commission needs to approach whoever gave us the grant and say, okay, we need to draw down the money to pay this bill. Is that correct? That's, Does, that's my understanding of the process, yes. And does Sandy have a copy of the bill? We don't know. 
they're the ones they're the ones who submitted it to us. They forwarded the Dubois bill to us. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, uh, I'll reach out her to her tomorrow. I'll circle back with you. Okay. Okay. But don't send the check. Yep. If the yep. messages don't send the check. Right. Okay. I think that's everything I've got. Okay. I did. I just would uh, would reference your. Uh, your your warrant uh, report or whatever call you calling it that you you sent out this time and I found that very helpful. It made it easier to understand. So, if that isn't too if that isn't a big problem, right? It's just pulling that report. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how everybody else felt, but it was a lot easier for me to tell what was getting paid and yeah, yeah, I like it. Stuff. So I would I would say we should continue that. Okay, we'll do. Okay. And thank yeah. you for that. I I thought that was. Uh, I thought that was helpful. I mean, we, if we ever get back to in-person meetings when we have the file of the bills there, maybe we won't need to do that. But in the meantime, in the meantime, I think it's a good uh, a good practice. Um, okay. Move approval of the minutes. Is that the next item? Uh, sure. Second. Sir, second to the minutes? Second. All in favor of approving the September 1, 2020 select board minutes, please say aye. 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 Abstain. Okay. Uh, you got enough people who approve the orders? I think everybody. Brenda? I didn't, oh, do, yes. I didn't sign I'm them sorry. yet. Sorry, yes. Um, yeah, I think I've heard from three of you, so no okay, problem. So you're all set. Yep. I like uh, what Amy did. Thank you for that. That was helpful. Good. I'm glad. Yeah, it shows a little more detail. So. Yep. Yep. Uh, correspondence. Uh, nothing. Nothing of uh, import. Okay. And. Uh, Do you want to talk other... about the the the, the uh, conservation commission thing under correspondence? Yes. Yes. Well, or under any other business, whichever. It's time. Yes. So I think Lee's here. Ooh. Hi. Yes. Hi, Lee. Hi, Lee. How's everyone doing? Good. Good. So I remember when I believe it was you came to us with this that this was that this was likely to come up, but now it's uh, now it's bubbling to the surface. So, and I don't have I don't have I read the stuff, but I don't have it up in front of me. But right. purchase this is a resolution to spend five thousand dollars of our conservation uh what's the name of the fund conservation, conservation fund. fund yeah um to assist in the purchase of the development rights of the peace farm and i believe the development rights and correct me lee if i'm if i've got the wrong number but i think it's three hundred and twenty-seven thousand is the number it's close to three 372.70. Okay, I had the wrong number. So our our share of this 372,000 is only $5,000. And what right. this does is and maybe you you explain it like you're the you're the man. All right. <laughs> so the Vermont Land Trust is purchasing the development rights um, for the Seedman Harrower property, um, and they they are encouraging continued agricultural use. They had a number of applicants um, that they worked with, and they selected this this person, Nicole Dutch, who has experience farming in central Vermont and is looking to expand her farming operation. Was is currently on leased land in Callis, I believe. Um, she has a good successful farming models, uh, sells at the farmer's market in Montpelier and to local restaurants. So the Vermont Land Trust, by buying the development rights, ensures that that property, it's, it's not the entire property, it's I believe 88 acres um, that's subject to the, to the project 
would be um, the development rights would be held by the Vermont Land Trust. And they're leveraging, um, obviously, other other funds are paying for the mo majority of it. This is more of a political, um, it helps leverage those funds, helps their applications to the larger pool of money and um, shows kind of solidarity and support from the town. So as a conservation commission, we, we reviewed the application um, back in June, had a number of comments and re received a revised application in August. Um, the revision was focused around having at least some language that there, um, there would be willingness to discuss uh, public access. There was kind of came down to no hard and fast set um, uh, way to bake public access into the conservation easement um, at this time, but the Vermont Land Trust broached the subject with Nicole and she seems eager to talk to the town about having uh, community events and, and other ways to involve town in, in the property, um, whether that's developing some trails or um, just hosting events at the farm. So <clears throat> in our last meeting, we reviewed the revised application and unanimously decided to support it. Um, we stepped through the conservation fund guidance document and looked at the criteria that they, they had pointed out in their application and agreed that um, it hit the nail on the heads in a lot of in a lot of respects and um, moved to recommend to the select board to use to, to provide five thousand dollars from the conservation fund as applied for balance in the conservation fund now do you know it's a little bit over nine thousand dollars and we've been putting in roughly five thousand a year yes yeah. As a special article. Um, right. on meeting. Correct. Correct. So when we discussed this, my memory is when we discussed this the last time, there was some concern, and I think I expressed some concern that really this was a private landowner situation, and was it really appropriate for the town to be involved, even in a relatively minor way? I guess since then in thinking about it the real question is is it in the town's interest to because by let me back up a little bit the way this works and correct me if i'm wrong lee is this makes it possible for someone to purchase that land someone who wants to use it for farming at a reasonable viable price so that economically it's possible for them to farm. Whereas if they had to pay the pool, the pool that what we'll call a development value or the full value, it would be so expensive that it would be unlikely that they could succeed in agriculture. So for me, it's That's exactly that, right. right. I've come around to the point of view that I think it is in the town's interest to maintain agriculture in Middlesex. That's a beautiful piece of land. I would hate to see, uh, and I, I don't know what, I don't remember what, what zoning area it's in, but I would hate to see it that divided up and, and a number of new houses built in those, in those beautiful fields. So I personally am I'm supportive of this. I think it is in the town's interest. And I think our contribution to the whole project is, is relatively minor, but I think it does show uh, our support. And I also think uh, it's in conformance with our, with our town plan, which is, uh, always a good thing to be able to point out when we're dealing with our town plan. Um, that was actually one of the criteria um, in, in other criteria. There's natural resources, scenic resources, uh, recreational resources, and other criteria. And the application has to uh, have some, you know, um, relevance in at least two of those. And in the other criteria, they pointed out that it meets some of the goals outlined in our town plan and conserving agricultural land. 
but there was actually something that was relevant in each one of those categories. And I don't know, now is the time to step through them if you wanted to in detail. I'm happy to do that. But Lee, do you offhand remember um, if the acreage included like the forest on the other side of Culver Hill Road across from the farm? Um, it, it includes part of that. Um, and they at one point provided a map um, I could send around that shows the breakout of the, the part of the parcel. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing it. I use that land a lot to ski on and Sarah's always let us use it. And I'm just curious as to what. what, what yeah. Yeah, what it's about, I guess it's of, 30 uh, acres of uh, tillable land and the rest is forested. Okay. So what 88. Is not included uh, of Sarah and Scott's land, what part's not included? Maybe that's an I, easier way to do it. Yeah, it's been, it's been a while since I've looked at the map. Um, I will just um, say that I did have a neighbor reach out to me um, to just ask, you know, if I knew what was happening with that property and they had some concerns about, you know, that that big um, barn that's there right now being used for some commercial reason. Um, you know, it's not in a commercial zoning and but, you know, I, I, I said to her, I didn't think that I mean, you know, looking at what what these um, farming is allowed, right? And you're allowed to have like a home business there. Um, so um, I just think that we'd want to, I don't know, keep an eye on what the plan is for that barn. I don't, the barn is a horse stable. It's not insulated or anything like that. Um, it's made out of, I don't know, plastic or something. I think it is. No, there's, a, there's the old, what I'll call horse barn. And then there's a hoop barn which is a which is a riding arena i think isn't it that's that's where it's, made out of metal. it's made out of plastic well whatever, made... whatever it is it's a it's it's like it it's i don't know whether it's meant to be a permanent building or a temporary building but yes it's it's there but you know i think the i think what the concert and and you know i don't know how how urgent is this lee do we need to act on this tonight or is there no and i don't think it was warned in time to be able to vote right. um, Right, it, it was not it was not worn. So, you know, we have time to uh, to circulate the map and and uh, and think about this. So, uh, if you would if you would do that, Lee, I think I think actually you sent all that stuff to us yep. once, so I may have it. But if you would right. resend it, that would be helpful. I could resend it to to all you guys. I just uh, great. That'd be great. Thanks, sir. That would be great, and I would also encourage. Uh, at the time, I went over and drove by there and peered around to try and. Uh, I mean, it is it is an absolutely, and I'm sure Liz would agree, it is an unbelievably beautiful uh, piece of land. And uh, I don't know. This, this I like the idea of a farm in Middlesex. You know, this neighbor was worried about, oh, if it's going to be a really big farm, are there going to be migrant workers, illegal workers living? I'm like, we're not going there. <laughs> I think oh, I also sent, I sent that to you t this evening, guys. So it's also with your current email. The picture, the map? Everything, yeah. If you look at the whole thing. Okay. Thank I, you, I think the fire department is trying to get in the building here. I don't know why, but hold on. I... Well, uh, can I, Lee? Um, the purchase of the development rights was done just between Sarah Scott and the Housing Conservation Trust Fund or wherever the source of the money is. Is that correct? That's one of the sources of the money, but Vermont Land Trust is, the, is buying the development right and they'll be the... <clears throat> That's who's that's who's purchasing it. Right. But that isn't before us. That was done in a separate transaction. Is that correct? I don't think it's happened yet. But it's gonna, but it's separate from this, correct? It's it's part it, it's separate and the it allows um, Nicole Dutch to purchase the farm at an affordable price. No, no, I understand that. But we're not paying any money to Scott and Sarah. We're paying the money to make the farm land trust. keep a farm here. The money would go to the Vermont Land Trust to purchase the development, right? 
Yeah, we are not going to, we mean in the town of Middlesex are not going to own the development rights the land trust is. Right, and I understand. At least not what, say. what, Mary, I'm sorry? I understand that. But I mean, usually it's a one two process. They sell the development rights and then the property is for sale at a reduced price because the property, the development rights right. were already transferred. So it's yes, two. Correct. Being they're connected because it's the same piece of land, but they're two separate transactions. Correct. Right. Correct. Okay, so we will uh, we will take this up at our uh, at our next meeting. Thank you. Be ready. Sorry, I'm back. Is okay. there anything? Did you do? I need to do anything for you since the time I left? No. Nope. Okay. Lee, didn't you want to talk to us about the delay on the on the forestry project, or that was just a uh, an email to us um i guess i got forwarded um i could mention it real quick we, there was an opportunity to um potentially um do some harvest har timber harvest in the town forest at the same time as the joining property scott bowden um, he's delayed his timber harvest at least a year because of market conditions we also um had the Chittenden County Forester, because Washington County doesn't have one right now, um, went out and assessed um, that where where on Scott's property we would skid logs out, and it it really didn't make sense. It's way up at the top of the ridge line where um, there's not really any trees worth cutting and it's sensitive habitat that should probably be left alone anyway so it even when scott decides to do his timber harvest it doesn't really look um like a reasonable way to skid logs out thanks hey sarah i don't see the map of the property it's in, if you click on one of those email one of those attachments it all comes down i will send it to you again just to make sure yeah i i didn't see any map when i was looking but um yeah it's it's in it's in the two there are two attachments and you click one and it's all cut there's like a bunch of pdfs and the map is there but i'll send it resend it of course it's always hard to see it on your cell phone <laughs> right so uh so Sarah, I guess the only other thing under other business is uh, congratulations on getting a grant for digitizing the town record. So that's great. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try to pull some um, fast action here. Actually, my computer recording computer absolutely had a breakdown meltdown today, almost as though it knew we had a grant for that. <laughs> so we might have to just uh, work with Avenue for them to uh, buy stuff. We may have to buy stuff right away and use that grant money to pay them ahead of time for digit for indexing because all this money has to be expended in a ridiculously short amount of time. Um, I've also talked to the state about uh, possibly getting an extension because this is just crazy. There's no way that these, uh, these vendors can keep up with the demand that's suddenly been created by COVID. So, I don't know what the state's thinking saying you get a grant in October or in September and you've got to have it spent by December 15th or 1st. I mean, I don't I don't know what universe they're operating in. That's a that's a federal issue. Is We're it the same thing at the Internet Board? That's the same thing with community action. All our money has to be spent by December 20th. It's insane. So how are you guys dealing with it? Well, Spending. You can't for, for Internet. I mean, you can't run fiber in a month and a half, you know, it's right. Like, Yours is much worse. Yeah. It's insane. But I mean, that's why a lot of town clerks didn't apply. And I figured the only thing we could do is I'm just going to talk to the state and see if we if we purchase this equipment right away, like computer equipment, that at least will be covered. And that would means that when we get the contract with Avenue renewed in May, um, it won't include financing as the current one contract does now for all this equipment that I use. So that should bring down our monthly recording expenses. At least we could get that. Sarah, can you get specs from them as to what they want to see in a computer? And I could probably get something ordered really you fast. You know what, Phil? I'm going to just go straight through Avenue because they actually, oh. when they came in and installed all this stuff, they actually they spent a week here installing it. It's pretty... 
Oh, okay. It's, it's pretty, uh, I, I have absolutely nothing to do with it, you know? And yeah. um, if they say, you know, absolutely we cannot, uh, they're obviously dealing with this with all the town clerks. So we're not the only one dealing with it. And I just don't want to spend any money and then not be reimbursed. But. Yeah, right, right. And, and d d don't they have the caveat that you have to show that you were affected by COVID for that particular purchase? And you well, that that's we already got the grant based on that. I mean, okay. what I you know I, I made an argument that it's a very small office and that okay. the people of Middlesex were underserved and things were delayed because they couldn't get into the office. Okay. Okay. Kind of. So, so Sarah, just quickly. Uh, yeah. The other thing that I want to talk about quickly is you you send out that email about the ballot box. Yes. Uh, um, I talked to I talked to the Secretary of State's office. We do not have to have this ballot this drive up drop box. I have heard a lot of interest from people in town saying you know that they would because they've been reading so much about drop boxes that they would like to have something like this. It's a um, a large drop box that would be bolted to the ground somehow and people would be able to drive up put their ballots right into the drop box and then i would be and it would be secure and weatherproof um but it wouldn't arrive for two weeks and uh, may not be worth it the the will the the secretary of state's office says that putting your ballots through the slot in the door is a is fine by them as long as the door is locked which it is do we need to install a bigger slot well, if we install a bigger slot, then I would suggest getting an entire unit where we have a slot that the bigger slot goes with a receptacle kind of like at your mechanics. So we don't have anything on the other end of the slot of this door in, in the same company sells a slot that matches a receptacle. So everything would be contained. Do you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the, is, the, yeah. The question for me would be, does it make more sense to to put the slot not in the door, but right through the side of the building going into that ante room. Well, in that case, I think you might as well do a secure weatherized lockbox because you don't have to go into the building. You have all you have to do is just install this. Um, this no, 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 no. I'm suggesting a slot through the wall from the outside. So you walk up to the building, you shove your thing in there. That's and then a, a box inside that catches whatever falls through. Well, I, I don't know. I think I just want to make sure that, you know, I mean, we have no time, right? We've got three weeks to have this installed and it ready be, to go. It would so. be easier to order a self-standing lockbox that comes fully assembled and then just have somebody bolt it to whatever. That seems to me to be much more doable within the time period than cutting into the building, installing right. the lockbox. That seems like a lot of trouble. Plus, people like to drive up and just deposit things. They don't have to get yeah, out. But, but can you, is there a place where you, we don't want to, we don't want to have the thing freestanding on its own concrete pad. We want to have it bolted to the building, right? So bolted, it just be, bolted to the building, just bolted to the building. Or some people are like, bolt, I don't know, bolted to the railroad ties that are out there <laughs> in the garden. I don't like the idea of something freestanding. That makes okay. me nervous. I'd rather that people just get out of their car and slide it into the door. And of course, and that is fine. That apparently meets the requirements, so we can just keep it like that. Yeah. We don't have to. We don't have to pay any money. I kind of like that too. Yeah. Okay. I'm picturing someone stealing the box, and well, that's why it has that to be bolted. Yeah. But, I, but I can, I can just tell you. For example, you have it lag bolted to those railroad ties. Yeah. I hooked my mighty three quarter ton truck up to that box with a chain and I would have it home in my house in 10 minutes. Just, yeah, right. like, just like Liz's car going up East Hill, right, Liz? <laughs> oh, I do remember that. Peter. I'm there too. <laughs> I'm, okay. just, I'm just saying if somebody really breaks down the door of the town clerk's office to get those ballots, I'm willing to live with that risk. Yes. And I like that better than the free. Okay, stuff. then fine. Let's just do that. Um, yeah. One other thing I want to talk to you guys about very briefly is that Dave Smith, who makes films, has come up with an idea to uh, make a short film for voters about the absentee ballot process. When you get your absentee ballot, how do you fill it out? Fill out that signature envelope. And then what happens uh, back at the town clerk's office? Um, how can you deposit your ballot? How can you return your ballot? Um, and then what happens? I mean, how do we open it? How do we process it? 
I think it's a really good idea. The quite probably, and he would do it for a reduced rate. So I'm asking for about eighty to a hundred bucks to pay for him to do that. Oh, love it. Yeah, let's yeah. do it. Yep, yeah, I agree. Yeah, um, I agree. Sarah. Um, I would also make sure he stresses that whole signing of the ballot when it's closed. Because two been... people in our family, including myself, had it all ready to go in the mail, and I realized I hadn't signed the envelope, and it would have completely... Well, Liz, out. I know that. There were 35 Voided my... uh, defective votes because of that, and I have to say that it went across all voters. Mm -hmm. uh, experienced voters didn't sign their signature envelopes. New voters didn't sign their signature envelopes. It was not, it was bizarre. And yeah. even people who came to drop off their about their envelopes on election day, on the primary day, they were about to drop off blank signature envelopes. <laughs> it was like, wait, right. wait a minute. So yeah, that's yeah. What, that's why we want to make this film, and yeah. we also want to put people at ease because the uh, I just every day people call with questions. How will they access it, um, um, Sarah? I think we're going to put it on the website and uh, hey. we'll, uh, you know, for front porch forum. We're also going to make it available to other towns and to the Secretary of State. I was going to say, yes, make it available. Yeah. That's great. Thank yeah. you, Dave. That was, that was Dave's idea, and I think that was yes, a great idea. idea. Anything else before we go into executive session? Mm. Okay, so we need a motion to go into executive session for personnel matters. So Bill, move. Move. Who, wait, wait, who made the move? Who made the motion? Bill and Liz. Bill, Liz. Okay, can you also, do you want me to be present? Uh, yes. So that should be included in the motion. That should be included in the motion. So we got to get rid of. Well, first you have to vote on it and then you have to get rid of it. Right. So okay. all in favor of the motion to go into executive session, which will include uh, Sarah, please say aye. 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 Any opposed?